codebuddies.org live code hangout. By joining or scheduling hangouts, you can ask questions, work through tutorials, share ideas, or pair program on open source projects. Today we're going to be continuing to work on the Sustainable Urban Design app. We've essentially got a geodatabase set up with PostGIS and we can now upload OpenStreetMap data to PostGIS. And we'd like to converge that backend work with the front end. We've got a client app that can render um, a map in various layers. And hypothetically, the client map is going to be communicating or interacting with the geodatabase through Django. So I think what we're going to do is create a hopefully a simple view or rest endpoint that um, essentially just pulls some uh, data from the PostGIS database and render, uh, serializes it to JSON and returns the value. Time permitting, we'll take a look at the client's code and see how we might integrate that, um, that REST API endpoint with the Vue.js client we've already developed in the experimental folder over here, the UI experiment. Essentially, we want to merge this into the main project at some, some point soon. Right now, we do have the Django project here under platform. We've got a folder of experiments here, including our notebooks where we've worked through um, some geoprocessing steps, such as um, converting op OpenStreetMap data to PostGIS and doing a basic proximity analysis. OK, so let's go ahead and First thing we we'll want to do is just start our development server. The Docker Compose file in the root directory will spin up a PostGIS database and PostGIS admin, PG admin 4, which is a nice user interface to managing and monitoring and interacting with Post PostGIS. So let's see um, earlier. Off stream, I pre pre processed some data from all of Finland. So, hopefully, that data will still be stored in Postgres. Essentially, what we've got is the public schemas and several OpenStreetMap tables. And the important thing is these tables, such as places of worship or points of interest, is what we've been mostly working with. Um, they have several columns. OpenStreetMap ID should be the identity column. Let me double check. And a couple of indexes. Uh, the feature class is what tells us what type of um, point of interest it is in this case. Take a look at some of the data real quick. This is cool. Nice feature when you have a, a geo database. The geometry column, it'll actually render it out. And we're dealing with data from all around Finland, but we're primarily primarily interested in uh, around the city of Tampere here. So this is just randomly sec selecting the first hundred um, hundred rows in the database. Whoops, what did I do there? All right, cool. Getting used to PG admin. Boy, you can pull things out and dock windows and stuff like that. It's pretty cool, but uh, I've now broken the browser. Let me just refresh and see if I can reload that. It's pretty cool. All right, we'll grab a little bit of tea here. Likewise, likewise we can, you know, check out the first 100 rows of the buildings table. Ah, uh, something wrong. Ah, file reset layout, that's nice. 
to know. It's pretty prominent there in the file menu. I'm probably not the only person that's uh, messed up the layout. It's pretty cool when you open the PG admin dashboard, you can see the server performance. getting some random data from around Finland. But you can see here we have building footprint. When I click one, it gives me the details about it. So somehow I, I expected this OSM ID column to be the identity column. constraints now indexes so it looks like there's all it automatically creates an index on the geometry column I had created one here thinking that would be a necessity, but no. I'm trying to look for the table definition to see which column is the primary key. None of them. Hmm. Might have to improve this process later. Uh, if we're going to be querying by OSM ID, we'll at the very least want to add an index there. No primary key. Anyway, this is a pretty powerful tool I have not used it before. I'm just kind of browsing around. All right, let's hop over to uh, Twitch to make sure I'm monitoring the chat. Here we go. So yeah, it's the Docker Compose file. It spins up both those services, make it easy to work with the project. And then what we need to do is go into the platform. Start Django. All right, we're not using poetry, so uh, Essentially, our platform, we're going to want to change the settings here in a way that lets people use, um, for the time being, lets them use SQLite if need be. Let me think here for a second. Actually, no, I don't think we can do that. We have to have the we have to have PostGIS running.
so we'll just get a, I don't know off the top of my head how to configure a Postgres database. I don't know if we want to add this DJ database URL yet. If we containerize this Django app, then this DJ database URL is handy, but uh, let's just look at uh, Make sure we're up to date with the master. This is not copying. Thinking if I should use the default settings here or not. Uh, or look for environment variables with fallbacks. Let's just try it first.
try that one more time. Alright, so... Alright, so we do need to create that. Just not sure it's going to interact with those other tables that are already there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, I have an idea. So, let me think here. So, we'll start an app called OSM and we'll freeze these models to the OSM app. They'll be unmanaged and then we can run the regular Django migrations. Hmm. That will allow us to do GeoJungle queries. I hope this isn't going to get too tangly. But well. We're doing it in a branch, so this is an experiment.
cool. There's quite a lot of tables there, some of which I didn't expect. So let's do that again. But we'll save the output to OpenStreetMapModels.py. All right, now we'll check that out. Like these address, things like that. Where did those come from? I think these will all be useful. I believe they might have come from GeoDjango. I mean, sorry, uh, po uh, PostGIS. to Postgres, schemas, public. Where did those come from? Views. Nineteen tables. Most of these are tables that I added though. These OSM. And then there's a spatial reference ref system. Might have been where it's inspecting also. Or tiger. There we go. Yes. So. I almost want two different apps: one for tiger and one for OSM. So the problem is, I'm not sure that everything has primary keys, particularly the data that I imported. All these tiger ones do. but the OSM ones don't. Dang it. I told it to use the index as well, so I wonder why I didn't set it as primary key. <coughs> this OSM ID. Well, my notebook, I can do that. Yeah. 
and a notebook. So let's see. So let's just add these primary keys in the notebook. To double check, it's I'm supposed to say index is true. It's kind of equivalent to primary key. In any case, and this code's a little bit simpler. We don't have two levels of indentation, and we just have a simpler.
syntax error. It, no, 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 we won't. Right, is that OSM ID? PG admin. Your columns are here in the Postgres, so yeah, it's just it's only scanning the Postgres table. But um, uh, sorry, the Postgres database. Which has a tiger schema. Hmm. All right. Anyway, public schema tables. And just any one of them. How do I list uh, columns again? Mm, OSM ID. And this should be primary key once I run this. good oh, 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 oh we got an error yes There's a way to ensure there's no duplication here. There's an argument. I can pass to the two. No, no, no. The set index function. Anyway. That verifies uniqueness. I don't know how, um, how many of these duplicate. There will be. Because this says it has to have. Where did I read that? Oh, it's in this. In the models, it says you have to have.
this is if they want to share the same database. So the other option is to just create a different database and sidestep this issue and then figure out how to Well, you can have multiple databases in Django. So that's that's the deal. Same user, multiple databases. Now, will I have this same problem though? I set our primary database to a freshly created one and let Django run migrations in that and integrate this in the databases uh, dictionary. I don't think I need this yet. For the time being, I'm probably just gonna query uh, the OpenStreetMap data. Mm. Manually, just writing my own SQL, so I, I, I won't use the ORM for, ORM for that. It would be nice to get a reference to that.
covered here, but I didn't see it in the example. This is a case where the ORM might be getting in the way a little bit, but it, I think it's not going to be too bad. Uh, the main thing is we're going to just create a, a database here and come to this later, shortly, <laughs> more or less. Surprised the Django migrate won't create the database. So we need to create the database. Just will have to document this. See if we can create a user with the database at the same time. That would be really cool.
I know, uh, what was that called? Uh, my C my PHP my admin has this this feature. But okay, it's just two steps. You need to log in. I create a user. A little older version of PG admin, but it should be relatively similar. Okay, so it is a, a group role.
not gonna worry about multiple databases right now. This indexing, this index creation didn't really work. I think I'll just revert those changes. that Cool. Just trying to keep the documentation in stride with the project. Now uh, we we've, we've got a migrated database. Let's check check it out real quick. And I'm gonna take a quick break after that. Tables. Yes, we got some default Django tables. We've got some suds tables from our apps and some. Plugins and a wagtail. Everything's good. Nice. Create the super user. Sure that was documented also. Yeah. Good, good, good. All right, let's take a quick break, a couple minutes. When I come back, I will. <laughs> probably just see about creating a view that serves up some OpenStreetMap data. So this actually, I might recreate the OpenStreetMap um, app, but instead of uh, using those auto-generated table definitions from the Django ORM, ORM um, just gonna create views that more or less call the Django, sorry, call the uh, PostGIS OpenStreetMap database directly. So we're renaming that. Uh, just in write plain SQL queries or use maybe, yeah, probably just plain SQL for the time being until we get, this is still a prototype. I'm just trying to have a prototype ready for uh, in the next few days to demo. So anyway, I'll be right back.
All right, cool. So I think what I'll do is I'll just create a, a view, serve up some mock data right now, and then figure out how to essentially make a query, uh, probably with Geo uh, Pandas. directly against this, I guess, this local running server. I think I'm just trying to think how I'll store the credentials as environment variables, or can I just, I'd like to just kind of define them here in this dictionary. And then I can call it a runtime and get the, get the credentials. Might not be a bad thing. Let me just double check. Uh, yeah, so settings variable in view. Yeah, all right, well, that's cool. So I can get the database, databases dictionary. For now, it's just Postgres. So let's create Yeah, let's create that open stream map app. Again. I don't know if Django Rest Framework is overkill right now. I'm going to create an anonymous view that returns some JSON. And I'm going to just use, uh, the way I'm figuring it out, I'm just going to use the uh, Geo Pandas to query to SQL directly into a GeoData frame, maybe do some processing, filtering, or I think. The filtering should occur in the query, though, <laughs> to the extent possible. And then once it's processed, or just directly, I could return it as JSON. So that 
Those both should work. Geo, so Pandas has two JSON and from SQL. Based view is uh, called for here. We might not even need render. So I'm kind of thinking J uh, Django REST framework might be good soonish. But is it too much? Because I don't need related serializers or any of that kind of stuff. I just need a view that serves an a that receives an HTTP request and serves a response. Doesn't even need to render a template, really. So, until we need it, I'm going to remove it. I should probably have done that with those other scaffold files. Kind of weird. Okay, first that's screwed up. But when I highlight text in the Django docs, I hit Control C. And I hit Control V. It worked this time. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and I might, might even add some URL parameters. I'm thinking at least I might want to do a bounding box query. I don't want to just return all the data. So it's going to be prefixed at the higher level module. The URL pattern here, it'll be prefixed with OpenStreetMap in the global settings. And then this would be essentially, there's an HTTP verb involved here, the get. And then we'll just say,
Alright, we don't have intelligence. So we'll look at our global uh, global URL patterns. That is, just needs to resolve before this catch-all. Pretty good. And this server, that's not the server. The server's not running. I think if I return something. So, localhost, port 8080, or 8000, slash OpenStreetMap, slash data. Let's see, if it works. No. Just let me double check these. So save those. The URLs pi does have open street map. Ah, uh, I haven't added that app. In the settings. There we are. Find those URLs. All right, well, that's one problem I would have encountered in a minute. See what I drawing there. All right, so yes. works. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, getting a little tired. 
easy to make mistakes like that. Cool. Now let's figure out how to return some JSON. So first I'll echo these settings. So how do we do that to get the database credentials? Dictionary. And then our dictionary. Might need a little bit more tea. All right, so I'm able to pull the credentials out. At this point, we're going to just double check that we've got at least pandas, if not geo pandas. And this might be something I could just use uh, SQL Alchemy or something for. If I don't want to pollute the project with too many. Um, dependencies I just suspect that geopendence is going to be what we want particularly if we want to return geojson that's the goal so actually that's That's what we're going to do. We're going to have a data frame. Yeah, this is new. No, I just didn't took me a while to discover it. Okay, so that's. Not as simple as I thought. Is there something I can use for the intermediary step uh, other than pandas or geopandas? The goal is to just get a query out of PostGIS either directly as GeoJSON, might be possible even, and return that to the client. That's the goal. All right, I'm going to just get some tea water boiling and I'll be right back. Make a little bit more, uh, probably green tea.
All right, the tea is steeping. I think the shortest path, shortest path is going to be best here, um, and hopefully not adding any new dependencies. So if I just take a look at our, well, firstly, I know uh, PostGIS can just return a the result as GeoJSON, which is good. So relying on PostGIS to do the work uh, makes things easier downstream. It might even let take a bounding box query, something like that. This is going to be useful to uh, make sure that when a user is panning around the slippy map, they're not downloading all the data for Finland, but rather just a uh, relevant area. I'll have to figure it out best if I want to get that far. But uh, the other thing is how then, from within Python environment, not even specifically Django, how do I make this query in our project? What dependencies, what libraries do we have available? already or what's a minimal library I can use to make that request. We have cycle PG2 and from what I understand what's the role of cycle PG2? It's a low level uh, connection engine right? Or is that G uh, SQL Alchemy that gives us the connection engine? A database adapter. There's the T. Okay, I'll be right back and we'll we'll dig into these docs. It's already available. And we'll just try to use what we have, build on that. One moment. Excellent. I've got some ginger green tea, as recommended by the tea shop owner nearby. It's a great recommendation. Both the ginger green and ginger black tea is, uh, are, are really good. They each have their own quality. I'm sort of, I like uh, the green teas because I don't put milk in there uh, or oat milk or whatever, so it saves a little bit of money. Don't have to always buy oat milk. So essentially, if we can make a, um, sorry, just a, a query here. This was something I was working on a little bit earlier. We can, I, oh, I've already done this. Okay, so I can actually refer to the notebook code a little bit here. Uh, for some reason, I thought I had a SQL alchemy for this step, but yeah, we, we're just going to execute a cursor. In this case, yeah, everything be, can be safely escaped. Uh, earlier, I was having troubles because I was trying to specify a table name and things like that as arguments. I'm probably going out about it all wrong, but in any case. So I can just come up with a query, and I can do this right in PG Admin. And this is a really cool opportunity just to learn more about PostGIS. It's very powerful. And just like Pandas, you know, these are just our go-to tools for data, you know, manipulation, querying, processing, PostGIS, and Postgres, they give you a lot of um, power, uh, but I think it really goes underused and underappreciated. So let's learn it. So what are we going to want to do? Just start with the basic thing, getting getting the query. So I'm not, I'm not going to use pandas here. 
just uh, out of curiosity, don't even have it installed in the project. Nothing against it. I really do like pandas. It's got its warts and quirks, but I want to keep our dependencies to a minimum. So I can use this spatial query as uh, GeoJSON. I believe. Uh, all right, or a row. I mean, more or less, this is what we're doing. In fact, in fact, we're using Mapbox GL. Uh, I'm still kind of just for what it's worth. I'm still kind of floundering uh, on the fence as to whether or not I should use Open Layers or Mapbox GL. I think they both have good merits. In any case, this project does currently have Mapbox GL. This is basically what we want to return, something like this. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how this works. I should probably look, I've got this good book from Manning Publications on how to use uh, PostGIS. I should probably be grokking that now. Uh, I want to query, let's run some SQL. How do I run it? Query here. Should be simple. Great. So I'm going to select SDS JSON all. So I hope the it'll wrap those properties up. But it's passing in tuples, which is essentially the same as passing in rows. I mean, rows are rows are sort of tuples. The relations, the features, and I don't know if I have to name those. If I just say from a table, which, and I should, in for clarity, rename this from Postgres to something like OpenStreetMap. It's not just open. Oh yeah, create a new database called OpenStreetMap. In fact, let's try something simple. Uh, This argument type is what's not working. Hmm. 
I can't display the uh, this Manning book on stream. Processing with Python. It's part of the Manning Early Access program. It's called PostGIS in Action, third edition. Is it? Yes. I don't know if this is going to be the source here, but I'm just going to give a shout out to Manning Publications there. Books are the top uh, quality books from, uh, from any um, technical or technology publisher. And I've read several, you know, O'Reilly, uh, No Starch Press, uh, Pact Publishing, uh, a, a Press, or something like that. A bunch of uh, publishers of varying degrees of uh, quality, quality and breadth of content. Uh, Manning is really good. They have pretty broad scope of content, uh, but the quality, they just uh, continually, they'll revise the books after they're published. Uh, their editorial quality is excellent. There's not a lot of errata or even just grammatical stuff doesn't slip through. Uh, the site, uh, the live book experience, reading experience is good, you know, like pretty good in my opinion. So yeah, I'm not paid by Manning or anything, but I've got several of their books. And I'm gonna just take a look at this PostJS in action book to see. If it's got a, just a, f a recipe to follow here. No. Okay, cool. In any case, I'll be reading that off the line. There's probably a Stack Overflow answer here. So. There's not a built-in, just single. I'm wondering if this geom is meaningful. So when we pass the geom here and the other properties. So what we're doing here is essentially creating a subquery. So let's start with the subquery. And what's the keyboard shortcut for this? Fine. All right, and we got a geometry.
Oh, oh, I see what I did wrong. I didn't put it from. Select from indented. Argument types. I think it's the, the argument types that I'm getting wrong. And I was hoping that the uh, it could just use the column titles. There's got to be a really simple way of doing this. So either I just return this um, SQL result into Django and convert it to GeoJSON there, or I can get it to GeoJSON in Postgres. What some of the options are. No. No. I think you Jason is the way to go though. And I, I want it this way. I want these features to have their properties nested. So I don't know if a feature collection would be better or yeah, probably, probably a feature collection.
Yeah, let's double check these Mapbox GLX, uh, GeoJSON example if it's using a feature collection. And uh, why was it so difficult to get GeoPandas to GeoJSON? I don't want to write it to a file. I'm not using the ORM though. So this is a database cursor. Can I pass it in a query result from CyclePG? I didn't think this would be as difficult. <laughs> All right, I don't have GeoJango installed. This seems to be the right approach.
I'm just searching this wrong. Okay. I just want to select, get some query results. A very lightweight solution, yeah.
crazy. I don't need a temporary values list. I just want to use it, the result of a query. So maybe. Yeah. Mm. Basically the same thing. All right. Couldn't have made more. Uh, clear, but uh, let me see here. Let me open another one just to check these. Well, okay, where are we at? Uh, no. All right. And so doing select star will do. Well, why can't I do select star? So give me an arbitrary order. Select star just for a moment from mm, which has the I'm just gonna ask this on Stack Overflow. I can't believe this has not been, nobody's tried this or what is going on? And actually, uh, why not Stack Overflow? There's the, uh, Yes. Stack exchange. Yeah. I'm just gonna look when we're done.
pretty close. One of these is gonna work. It's just so dense, this kind of coding makes it harder to see how it works. And it's kind of why I'm hesitant to move things into PostJS because SQL is really expressive, declarative, but denser than R language code from, yeah, academia. The mind boggling. It's actually a little easier to grok right here. close. Let's just try it. I'd like to open another scratch pad. Mm -hmm. uh, scratch pad. All right, so it should be called features. This is an individual feature.
This is some heavy duty sequel, man. Jeez. Where's the GID coming from? Okay, that's one thing that I thought was incorrect. Problem. I'm just so double quotes is how you has uh, something that always confuses me. So single quotes is for a st string, double quotes is for referencing columns and tables. Test that at each step of the way. And then these. Let's see if this helps. And I still think this now we're gonna be over SMID because that's how our data are structured. Ooh, ooh. Oh man, did I get something back? How do I inspect this? Oh, there we go. Make it a little bit bigger. Oh dude. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So I didn't have to ask the question, I just needed to search better. Cool, all right, so then we'll figure out how to parameterize this, but hey, we've got something. I can see if this is a little tighter representation. No, no I'm just going to leave it alone. I got it working. Okay. I can see why they kept the example a little bit simpler by providing the values directly. <laughs> But man, it obviously, it honestly could have been documented. How do we update, how do we edit the Postgres docs?
actually, yeah, so that's the wrong. No search. Well, if there's a GitHub mirror, I can at least find the file. Cool, so we got the query working, and you know, I can just grab 10 of them, and the same thing.
I see. So this is actually subtracting those. Kind of interesting. I'll make sure this is documented in the code, but okay. So it's using the feature ID. It doesn't really hurt if I put the uh, OSM ID in there. We'll just exclude the geometry. Cool, let's bring it over to the project. Oh man, we got something going on. <laughs> there we go. Now instead of a limit, we'll probably do a bounding box query. In any case, let's see if we can get this to the client. Hey, Dr. Unafraid, welcome. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of late coding. Feeling a little bit of pressure. Uh, I just want to have a functional prototype by this weekend. I kind of set a a soft deadline for myself and I've been slacking on it. <laughs> and I need to kind of converge some of the experimental code I've got in these notebooks into the main Django project and get the data into this JavaScript client. So the whole, so you can see the whole picture. I can kind of see in my mind's eye, but not quite. It's coming, as I work through it, it becomes more apparent how things are supposed to work. <laughs> Yes, so now we're going to essentially indent that. Ah, it doesn't matter. But I like it like that. Um, we're going to work with connection engine. So we'll need to import, and I can kind of reference our uh, notebook here. What have you been up to, Dr. Unafraid? How are you doing this evening?
<laughs> nice. What time is it where you live? Let me check the settings. I just want to get these properties here for the uh, user password. Yeah, and the host should be there as well. Settings. Mm, this is straightforward. User password host. It's a really long line. So we'll use this query in a minute. Okay, is the, uh, it says I'm broadcasting at 6,000 kilobits a second. Is that too high of uh, stream quality? I had, I remember I had bumped down those settings before to make the stream a little uh, less bandwidth intensive. I'll have to do that again. I've reinstalled everything. So uh, I'll tweak the settings again. So yeah, how do I inspect the... Uh, the doc strings for things and... I'm jumping between IDEs and it just gets confusing. space Oh, it is seek lock me. Man. Yes, I, I agree that uh, Django has the object relational mapper, and uh, by default, I should be using that. That's definitely good advice. This is a special case. Um, I've been working on a kind of geoprocessing pipeline just to get OpenStreetMap data into PostGIS. And uh, Django is not managing this. The essentially, this is the uh, OpenStreetMap database. Django doesn't really; it's not really aware of this database or any of these tables or anything like that. Um, these tables and the data are going to be managed through a side chain process that maybe synchronizes on a nightly basis or something like that. At this point, I'm not going to register these with the Django ORM. So I'll need to just defer to raw SQL. And I need to 
figure out how to query raw SQL, make queries directly with cycle PG2 or something like that. All right, so that's why I can import that. So I have this uh, cycle PG. All right, I'm just going about it the wrong way. I'm, I'm trying to do things the um, sort of uh, SQL Alchemy way, but really I'm one, I think, layer lower than that. So I need to actually import Cycle PG2. You have a good catch, Dr. Dr. Interfraid. And yeah, if I'm ever like doing something really silly or uh, confusing, yeah, just do call me out on it. Sometimes it'll be for a decent reason. I'm not 100% um, confident this will be the way this will work in the long run. Uh, I might eventually use the Django ORM to at least um, query these, it, not manage them. There was a way earlier in the session today that I was able to generate some model definitions by having Django inspect those database tables. It was just um, kind of a no-go for a couple of reasons. One is that the imported data don't have indexes. None of the uh, fields are, uh, not indexes, but primary keys. And then when I tried to assign those primary keys, uh, there's duplicate values in the, uh, the logical primary key would be OSM ID, but there's duplicate values there. I could create a, a sequential primary key field uh, but I just thought maybe just querying it directly, not worrying about the primary key right now. That's just one of the constraints, though. When you do um, when you integrate uh, legacy database with Django, you've got to go through some cleanup process. Hey, Matt Boyd, welcome to the welcome to the stream. Uh, hmm, ostentatious. I'm not quite sure. Ostentatious is like uh, excessive and unnecessary, right? And maybe showy, like. Uh, Glitzy or glamorous. Hmm. And ever could be ever, not just in the recent memory. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I can't think of much. Hmm. All right, so Cycle PG2, let's read the docs. First, we'll make a connection. We'll create a, a connection string. Now I believe this cycle PG2 connect and this is not necessary anymore. And then what? Then what do we do? What do I do? That's a, a DS and like it's so a connection string or parameters. I'd prefer that way to be honest. It's just a little cleaner code wise. So we've got database, user, password, and host. DB name, ah. database, user, password, host. What's the most ostentatious thing you've ever bought, Matt Boyd? And don't spam, please, if you're coming here to spam. Just never know, there's increasing amounts of spam on these channels.
normal duration of my projects, like how long uh, I, I work on them or something like that. Essentially, um, in recent memory, I mean, there's been some experimental and kind of throwaway projects, but um, I have a project called Jerry Life where I've been working on that for about five years, and it's still under development. Uh, I worked at a company and we made an open source um, API proxy, and I was involved with that project for about three years, I think, something like that. And uh, what else we got? This Western Friend project I've been live streaming on. Um, I've been doing that about a year and a half, almost two years. Uh, it's not done, and it'll go into kind of a maintenance and development mode once we get the minimum viable product. We're hoping to have that by the end of this year, and I said that uh, at the end of last year as well. But, um, we'll actually deploy the site, and it'll be in use. And with this you know, sustainable urban design um, app. These projects, they basically take on a life of their own if you're kind of dedicated and uh, you have a good idea and you want to follow through with this and you get out of the toy project phase. So yeah, it's not just, I think, my the projects uh, I w work on have a longer life cycle, but I mean, everybody can find that project that's a passion project and very interesting. And the key is just to try to make a livelihood out of it try to help it become your main focus in life. That's the difficulty. I haven't uh, worked that out, how I can really focus on this project. But like I say, the Jerry Life and the other project called AppInf, those uh, were closer to livelihood projects for a few years that the AppInf project was. And the Western Friend project, I do get a small stipend for continuing that, to develop that. All right, so we've got a connection now we're going to set up a cursor. And with that cursor, we're going to execute a, a command or a statement. And I want to get the result, though. Ah. Instead of fetch one, or I guess that fetch one would work because this returns a feature collection, so there's only one row. <laughs> Cursor execute. Right, the moment of truth. I probably have some typos or some errors here. Let's figure it out. Oh, oh wow, we got data. Data in the browser. Yes, how can a developer earn money? That is the question. While under development, while you're prototyping, that is a really important question too. Well, I think the Silicon Valley um, answer to that is to seek venture capital funding and just coast and run uh, and try to fly, try to get off the runway. Uh, but I think what that leads to is just perennial venture capital fundraising rounds and maybe never really getting off the runway because you then become addicted to the cycle of having to spend all your venture capital money in order to get more venture capital money and maybe you'll develop a, a, a good product in the meantime, but I think the game, the rules of the game change to uh, shift the focus more to a certain extent on impressing venture capitalists than uh, developing a good product to a certain extent. Looking good, like uh, for, for future uh, investors, so you know, you could pump up some the numbers, the um, hire a bunch of employees, things like that, to kind of artificially inflate the perceived value of the company. 
So that's one way to get some money, but I think it's a treadmill and leads to great waste. And then the venture, the VCU funders, they, their main value in goal is to get profit, whether or not they fully are on board with your uh, mission or vision for your project is another thing. Uh, they often just see it as a, an opportunity to become richer or get a return on investment, uh, which then gives you a strong, your company a strong kind of motivating factor to, uh, I don't know, essentially to become profitable, but that pressure can change the way your company pursues profit. It can change your mission and um, vision, basically. So I don't know. I have a hard time articulating this, but that's plan A. That's the common, the Silicon Valley way of uh, funding projects while they're under development, projects and products, services. Um, I think other ways would be to take on small business loan, treat it like treat it like a small business, treat your software like a uh, in your startup like a, a company, like you're you know starting a bakery or something like that. Take on a small bank loan, get seek some uh, matching grants or something from government sources. Uh, try to bootstrap the business. Work with kind of potential. Identify your customer segments and work with potential customers from the right off the bat from the get go. And that's the approach I'm trying to take. I'm sort of learning this through a couple of business mentors uh, or one, one, oh, I have one business mentor and uh, sort of like a startup hub here. In, in Tampere and a few other resources um, for entrepreneurs who are just kind of getting a feel for how to essentially do exactly what you're asking, earn money while you develop an idea. But yeah, there's not a straightforward answer. I know that freelancing, you're going to be working to other people's visions and, and their goals and those uh, freelancing jobs uh, are going to be temporary and they're not going to be personally driven, they're not going to be informed by your values and your vision and your ideas so much. Uh, similarly, working with in a large company, you'll be again working towards somebody else's vision and mission, uh, developing their product. And if you're really enthusiastic, you know, it might be a really good synergy and it could develop your, you know, skills and whatnot. So that might be a good way in the meantime uh, of d starting to develop some career skills is getting in, in the getting a foot in the door of some company that you, you know, uh, you're interested in their product and not like necessarily a consultancy because I think consultancies are the same thing. They don't really have a mission or vision. They just kind of do other people's, other companies' works and they're important. Consultancies are important. But I've found it's a really a different experience when you're at a company uh, or doing a project that has like a purpose and has like, it's uh, solving a need. Um, hopefully you've identified will have identified a need. I've also worked at um, a company where we didn't quite know what the customers needed and just ran the whole um, feature mill on assumptions. So that's not a good way to do it. <laughs> I want to put on a little bit of a di digression here. But yeah. Okay, yeah, so the freelancing is getting your brother, um, holding your brother over. Uh, is he doing freelancing on the si uh, side or was it in between full-time work. Yeah, and this actually comes back pretty pretty quick. I think the response is almost immediate. Somehow I might be able to encapsulate this. Uh, to a reusable function that takes some uh, arguments. But essentially, most of these OpenStreetMap tables, the derived tables that we've got stored here, they have the exact same column structure. And oftentimes, we're just filtering by feature class and so some kind of a, a bound query. So it could be that, just make a helper function. Just getting kind of tired here, but uh, yeah. Where do you, what's conventional in Django projects to define just helper functions? You 
details. Function pi is a little better. Or actually, yeah, queries that pi. some parameters here. I'll come to the filtering it um, later. And I don't know how I'll filter the geometry now that I think of it. He started uh, freelancing the past, but the freelancing didn't go so good. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking it's not for everybody, and it, it really is just a kind of a cutthroat thing that's set up, and it's even really just difficult. We, like I said, we hired a well, we've hired a kind of a couple freelancers for Jerry Life because we don't have we can't pay full time salaries. It's not that bootstrapped of a uh, project or company. But we uh, we are needing to develop it, and just most of the applicants in the um, um, when I uh, we put the freelancing job for a developer, um, there was a lot of spam, or it was just hard to sift through the um, applicants, uh, varying degrees, like varying price ranges, and uh, I could see a tendency to want to go like the bottom, uh, the cheapest, or something like that, and some I don't know. Um, but our experience with the freelancer who we hired has been really phenomenal. So let's see, let's add a doc string. if you will we'll be able to compose these queries.
I'm just going to put these uh, here as reminders. We'll have to put an error handling as well. Hmm. Well, this is just generating the query. Keeps things a little bit cleaner. It's a pretty heavy query anyway, but uh, yeah, let's see if that works then. I don't have a horse in the game here, but I, I've just read somewhere not to use utils.py somewhere. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, I'm just kind of uh, wondering if I, uh, I could sort of compose queries. In other words, have something that generates parts of it and inserts them conditionally. So, for example, if F class is present here, then we can add a where clause. Mm. Yes, <laughs> data is coming. Okay, and what are we at? Three hours in, and I did a, like a three or four hour session earlier today. Uh, so this has been a pretty long day, uh, but really good progress. Uh, I think we're at a pretty close to a stopping point. It's uh, not as pretty looking at raw data, but um, the next part will be to put it onto a map. And if we just want to see a map here, I can just we can just take a look at a map real quick. <laughs> if I go back over here to well, let's say mm, always in buildings, and I say show me a hundred of those. 
and there's this nice feature where it takes a geometry column and maps it. Woohoo! So I guess these are in some sort of sequential order by the maybe the order they were created inadvertently. Uh, they're inadvertently ordered by that. Something I don't know. Here's some building footprints in Durku. Actually, come to think of it, if I Oh uh, yeah, they're ordering it by OSMID. So I think the OSMID is incrementally uh, incremented, <laughs> sequentially incremented, something like that, uh, when uh, new features are added. So yeah, yeah, this is PG Admin. It's pretty nice, uh, really capable administrative interface for Postgres. Uh, I haven't even again scratched the surface. I mentioned this earlier, and. Um, but basically what you can see here is um, this Postgres database is actually the OSM database, more or less. Um, it's the default one that's installed. Perhaps I'll create a, an OSM database so everything is explicit. And then we created a, a database for our project. And that's all the Django-y stuff. The schemas here, the tables are down here. So we got Django and then all of our app tables and then some tables relating to wagtail so that's there and Django is managing this database but Django is unaware of this database so that's why I'm kind of straddling the fence here I'm writing raw SQL queries because this whole database is generated through a data processing pipeline here and our experimental notebooks currently essentially I don't remember if you were, you've probably, I think you were in on these sessions a little bit, Dr. Unafraid, but, uh, you know, we're just downloading a bunch of um, shape files from OpenStreetMap extracts from GeoFabric and uploading those to um, post, post GIS. And so Django doesn't do any of that. It's not involved in any of that data processing. And I think this uh, OpenStreetMap data is more or less going to be read only. We're going to just use it as references and we're going to build some derived features off, off of it uh, such as coverage, um, convenience or proximity of uh, different amenities like food sources. We've done those in a previous um, session as well. Our proximity analysis notebook. So the key is I just got to get this stuff back into a JavaScript client. In order to do that we're going to have to be able to query GeoJSON data from Postgres as well as manipulate those in the JavaScript client more or less, or perhaps in Python. Oh, this isn't rendering anything. I thought that would render the things. Yeah, so it's all coming together a little bit. It's still, I understand, a bit opaque. There's a lot of moving parts. The dust hasn't settled. I hope to do one more session this weekend. I don't know if it'll be a live code session or I'll just have to work offline or off stream. I think it's about as simple as the code's going to be. I, I need to add a function doc stream there. But uh, And uh, I think these query parameters will come in from the request. But
Yeah, this code's on GitHub at github.com slash sustainable urban design. Slash app. <laughs> it's a repository. Uh, sustainable urban design is our project. So yeah, it's right here. Very, very cool. All right, I'm getting tired. I gotta take a break. What time is it even? 2 a.m. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Whoa, dude. All right, I'm gonna do the outro now, Dr. Unafraid. It's good to see you again. I'm just gonna basically run through the changes we made today, or in this session, summarize those, and then I can uh, upload that to YouTube. Imperium, yo, what's up? You just keep coming right when I'm about to summarize the streams. How do you do that? It's good timing, but uh, bad timing. <laughs> the next stream, I can't tell off, I don't know offhand. Um, it might be Tuesday, next Tuesday night. I don't think I'll be able to stream this weekend. And Wednesdays, I'm usually busy. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I don't have very good, uh, very stable schedule on these streams. I'm kind of doing this stuff ad hoc in my spare time. And I was on holiday for a while, so I was able to stream more often. But now we're, I'm coming back into more scheduled time. And I can't stay up this late very much more. So, yeah, I'm sorry, Dr. Interfred. I, I can't really. Uh, so I say let's aim for Tuesday because I'll be doing coding on Tuesday. So I might as well hop on this stream. And... Uh, if you check out uh, codebase.org, I always advertise this stream there, and there's a lot of other streamers and hangouts on that website. I'm sure you've already checked it out, but um, that's the best way to find out the next time I'm going to stream. I'll, I'll post it there a little bit in advance, not days in advance. Yo, 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 Imperium. All right, you want to see the recap, Im Imperium? I'm going to explain what we did. It was some pretty epic... SQL, we got help from um, some people on Stack Overflow. Let's check it out. We can just get everything up and running here. Might as well, let me just uh, get ready in one second. So basically, I'll just open a, a pull request here on GitHub. We can see. Essentially, the thing we're doing here is getting some, some data to the client. We've got the data into PostGIS. Now we need to get it through Django to the JavaScript front end. Let me see. So I updated the docs, I scaffolded an app, got this crazy. I need this. I don't have a linter reminding me what's going on. Crazy SQL query, but it's it's doing its job. Uh, I don't have any tests. Oops, let's ignore that. Mm, so I'm just got a view going on and database to make the connection. Uh, yep. So we're gonna spin through those changes. We'll we'll go to the settings and show that as well. Yeah, I guess I can just read through the, the changes here. Okay, you ready? Okay, cool, that's how you're finding out about these streams is Code Buddies, very cool. That's a really great way to get involved and uh, start learning to code as well and get uh, get some uh, commits on your, your GitHub history is by contributing to these open source projects like Code Buddies. Dig a drink of tea and we'll do the recap. Hello and welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. This is the second session today, but uh, it's been a pretty productive day. Essentially, we started by getting some 
OpenStreetMap data into PostGIS and uh, being able to just inspect the structure of that and automate that process uh, via some scripts. Here I'm having a little bit of trouble scrolling around, but uh, essentially we're looking at building footprints. Um, all the OSM data are in their own tables. These are the, coming directly from the shape files we've been working with, the geofabric shape files uh, we've been working with over the last week or, or so. So that was the was where we started. Now we want to get this data into a JavaScript application via Django, and that's going to be what will enable us to do spatial analysis and, and things like that, uh, hopefully through a nice user interface. Um, so essentially, we've updated the docs here. If you go to github.com slash sustainable urban design slash app, and here's the pull request from this session's work. Um, I'm hoping these documentations are uh, the documentation is very clear on how to get our project up and running. If there's any issues, um, I just feel free to open up a support request, a help request on GitHub. I'll, I'll improve the documentation. Um, the main thing we did, though, is we need we switched Django over to use um, Postgres. At this point, we were previously using um, SQLite. So you. You need to create a, a specific um, a database for Django to manage. Um, I tried le allowing uh, whoops, Django to manage the default database that's created with our Docker Compose, and that's the, also the database where the OpenStreetMap data is written. Um, but it just wasn't straightforward. Django detec would detect the um, pre-existing tables, and uh, we would need to run an initialization script and several other steps and make sure there's a primary key field and things like that. And I didn't have a clear candidate for a primary key, so I just decided uh, let's just keep these in separate databases for simplicity uh, and, and just add a little bit of um, extra work for the developer when we're first setting up an environment. We might smooth this out a little bit, but I hope it's not too bad. You just And we have provided the uh, PG admin um, tool, so you can kind of point and click to do it. After that, um, we started working in Django, more or less. Uh, actually, I started working directly in, in, in PG Admin to, to uh, work out the query. Um, and so with some help of Stack Overflow, our goal is to get some GeoJSON data to the JavaScript client. And the question was where to do the uh, conversion. You know, It's pretty straightforward to query data in Postgres. But how do we get um, that data into a, a different form into the GeoJSON um, structure? Would Python be the better place to do that? And my inclination is to do as much as you can in the database and uh, work uh, subsequent layers only when needed. So I didn't want to add another dependency to the project. Even if I would have added GeoPandas, there is not a clear way that I could find for GeoPandas to uh, create a GeoJSON um, structure in memory. It would want to write that to disk or something. So anyway, I searched Stack Overflow and found, um, I read the you know, documentation for uh, PostGIS. Uh, it has a few examples. Uh, the problem with the examples that are provided, they're not showing how to use like a, a query, like a table query. They're, they're kind of manually preparing uh, a values list. Um, and really, I thought a values list is a lot in common with a table query, but this is just all brand new to me. And it would seem that it would be nice to have just a simple function, and more or less there is. But after searching uh, through Stack Overflow and ex experimenting a few times, here's the function that just returns uh, three values right here you can see in action and this is also a nice feature of PG admin if you've got a geometry table and it's uh, in the right projection or in the right uh, coordinate system lat lawns it'll let you display it on a map it'll render those out for you and even let you inspect the objects pretty nice feature so you can kind of the cool thing about having the graphical interface is you can experiment with things and get immediate feedback to make sure at each step of the way, 
your code is working. And so that's why I turned here first rather than going to Django, as I kind of mentioned earlier. Um, we went from the database to the database administration tool. So we're, we've got this uh, nested query and we're naming it inputs. And then we have a parent query that's taking each of those inputs and creating um, more or less a GeoJSON feature. And we're using the OSM ID for consistency. We're converting the geometry to JSONB as it was recommended in the Stack Overflow question. And then we're conveying the properties um, in the GeoJSON object as well. Uh, these properties could even eventually include derived properties and um, such as whether or not the um, place of interest or a building footprint has a ready access to uh, amenities like food sources or transportation, things like that. Um, so those will all go in the, the properties and we're excluding the geometry from the properties because it has its own special treatment and here we can actually look at the output. Uh, it's not so... <laughs> nice uh, but more or less you just see the raw JSON feature collection there's a list of features each having an ID uh, being of type feature and a geometry and it does infer the correct geometry type from what I can tell I haven't uh, worked with multi polygons in this query yet and then you can see that the properties um, are, are passed through as well so these can be used for labeling or or further filtering uh, in the clients or in Django. Okay, now let's take a look at how we move this um, code into Django. And I apologize if I'm going a little bit long. I'm kind of tired. But essentially, I created a helper function that just kind of wraps up that whole query. And let's say it's using F strings here, which now on second thought, I realize this is dangerous because this is going to uh, ostensibly take user input. So I'll have to. <laughs> reconsider this approach. Uh, but in any case, uh, this was to allow people, the query to be parameterized. I might be able to yeah, make this safe by protecting it or in introduce SQL Alchemy or uh, I think actually, now that I recall, um, we're using Cycle PG2 and Cycle PG2 allows parameterized queries. So I'll just have to um, that'll be the next step is to secure this. I've got to take it one step at a time and get things working. Um, but in any case, this is just using F strings. So the table is a parameter, the limit is a parameter. And I need to figure out also how to uh, use these filter, the F class and pot potentially the, uh, the geometry column to do spatial queries and uh, categorical queries of the data. Not sure exactly, but uh, right now we're just returning default to 10 items to get something to the client. So that's a query, it's just a helper function. And it's pretty much a standalone thing. Uh, we then create a view in, in Django, uh, map it to a URL in our project. So we have a OpenStreetMap project uh, prefix of all the OpenStreetMap URLs. And OpenStreetMap is a new project I mentioned we created. and the OpenStreetMap slash data will invoke this uh, get OSM data. Currently it's not taking any arguments. Um, but I'll have to figure out how to allow parameterized queries, particularly those that are filtering based on feature class and, and whatnot. So in order to get the data from Postgres, we use cycle PG2 and our helper function to generate the, uh, the query, query string as well as uh, pulling in some settings for the database and re we're going to be returning an HTTP response. So I'll show this, our app settings. We added a second database here. So by default, Django is going to manage the Postgres uh, SUDS database I mentioned here. We have two databases. Uh, created the SUDS one and this Postgres is the default one that is part of our Docker Compose. And I added the OpenStreetMap database where we've been uploading the OpenStreetMap data. Its name currently is Postgres. I might um, 
make things more explicit by creating a another database and calling it OpenStreetMap. So things it's just clear when you go to inspect the database what resides where. But in any case, we can now use these settings in our view function. So essentially, I just uh, use the Django settings. Uh, it's more like a, it's like a dictionary, basically. It's not a module uh, to grab those settings out. And we create a Psycho PG2 connection and open a connection cursor and then generate that query and specify the table here. Um, so the, essentially, as long as I encapsulate the query parameters uh, in the view function, I, I believe I can make this code safe. And again, Psycho PG2 um, Not sure where. And I'll read the docs to find out how to make those Psycho PG2 uh, queries safe and parameter those parameterized queries safe, so that you can won't get SQL injection attacks, things like that. We execute the query and then we get the uh, single re result back because um, this query returns one row. It's a JSON feature collection, and when we run the the view in our client, here it is. I'll just refresh it. Uh, OpenStreetMap slash data we get back this feature collection uh, with 10 different um, features from the OSM points of interest table in our post uh, Postgres database. Sorry, I'm just switching tabs and I'll get a little bit slow. It's been a long but fruitful day. <laughs> so that's that. We're on the brink now of being able to render this in the client uh, JavaScript app we created. So that'll be the next step. Looking at the query, making the code a little bit more clean and secure perhaps, and allowing, um, essentially this is a Git request, allowing some query string parameters probably uh, so that you can find specific feature classes or look for uh, points of interest within the certain geographic extent, like a bounding box, something like that. But all this should be possible. It's uh, been a really interesting learning uh, process. It's nice to work directly with um, uh, PostGIS. It's very powerful and uh, I think often maybe overlooked even. Um, so that's, a, that's about it. I'll just uh, Mention that if you'd like to get involved with this project, go to uh, github.com slash sustainable urban design. And we do accept uh, contributors of all backgrounds and abilities. Uh, you don't have to be a coder or an experienced coder by any means. Uh, we need help with documentation and testing and uh, community building, design work. There's a lot of ways that you can contribute to this and other projects. And if you'd like to get involved with the uh, a very active community is stopped by codebuddies.org. Codebuddies has a lot of different um, groups forming around different topics and projects, and uh, the Codebuddies platform is also open source. You can go to github.com slash codebuddies. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Sorry for being a little bit uh, sluggish during this recap, but I hope you're doing well out there. Stay safe. Peace.